um, the monthly um, edition uh, today from here from the Montreal General Hospital in uh, Montreal. Um, uh, unfortunately, Bettina uh, Bessler had to excuse herself because uh, she's not feeling well, and uh, I hope she will be back uh, then for her next turn. Um, so I will be moderating the moderator today. And um, there is just one paper we discussed today, so we have a little bit more time. And uh, the paper is um, on an important topic, which is adenosine stress CMR perfusion imaging, a method that uh, now has shown that it is at least as accurate and clinically useful as nuclear medicine and has a positive impact on outcome, even when compared with the Kurt Gold standard um, FFR. So in the paper today is entitled Feasibility of Adenosine Stress CMR Perfusion Imaging in Patients with MR Conditional Transvenous Permanent Pacemakers and Defibrillators. And it is presented by Anna Julia Pavon from the Cardiocentro uh, Torticino Institute uh, in Lugano in Switzerland. And this represents uh, work from her time at um, the uh, team in at the University uh, of Lausanne, the Centre Hospitalier um, de l'Université de Vaux, uh, where Jörg Schwitter works. And uh, so um, first pass perfume imaging, imaging has made into the first row, even in the guidelines. But of course, people are still somewhat sometimes concerned about potential contraindications. And for years, uh, we were worried about pacemakers. Over the recent years, have become more and more clear that pacemakers do not necessarily represent a contraindication whatsoever. And the same is true for defibrillators. So it was necessary to have data on how this works um, in, in such patients. And that's why this uh, work is uh, important. So Anna Julia, take it from here. Thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction. And here is afternoon. So good afternoon to everybody. So as we have already here, um, CMR plays an increasingly important role in ischemia detection in both current European and American guidelines. However, for many years, the presence of an implantable electronic device was considered an absolute contraindication for MR scanning. But thanks uh, to technologies, uh, now we have MR conditional uh, um, devices who are now compatible and we can uh, uh, actually put patient inside MR. However, still the application of adenosine stress CMR in patients implanted with MR conditional devices has only been investigated in a very, very limited number of studies. Recently, um, Theo Pezel and his group in France showed that also in patients with pacemakers, using a, a CMR stress perfusion can have an important prognostic value. But still, despite all these results, the use of stress perfusion CMR in this population remains very limited. Mainly it's due to the uh, fear of possible uh, artifacts related to the metallic components of the device, or maybe because of the risk of adenosine interaction with cardiac pacing. So actually, the aim of our study was to assess the safety of stress perfusion CMR in patients requiring cardiac pacing during adenosine stress and to evaluate image quality and to study the potential interference of the magnetic field with the functioning of the devices immediately after CMR at a one year follow up. And the second objective, we sought to examine the diagnostic performance of stress perfusion CMR. To do that, we conducted a retrospective single center analysis between August 2013 and March 2021 on a cohort of consecutive patients with implantable cardiac devices that presented themselves for a suspected or known uh, uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy. Exclusion, exclusion criteria were the classical uh, contraindication to CMR or adenosine stress test. Patients' follow-up and clinical outcome were then collected from medical records and or from direct contact with the referring cardiologist. 
And as I have already told you, the primary endpoint of the study was the safety of CMR in patient pacemakers dependent during vasodilator stress and evaluation of image quality. Then also we try to assess uh, the presence of significant coronary stenosis uh, on coronary angiography and its concordance with the detected stress perfusion defects and the possible immediate and long-term interference of the magnetic field with the um, electronic device. To note, uh, uh, CMR was always performed more than six weeks after the device implantation as it was recommended by the manufacturer and uh, uh, all patients arrived at the hospital 30 minutes before the examination. In all this time, a colleague experimented in arrhythmologist who came and evaluated the pacing to set uh, it in MR safe mode and to evaluate the um, uh, degree of uh, atrial or ventricular pacing, because if the patient was paced more than 1% of atrial or ventricular pacing, they were all put in a synchronous mode, irrespective of their actual rhythm, in order to avoid possible asystole or bradycardia during adenosine stress. In all the other cases, uh, the pacemaker was uh, simply turned off. Then uh, all the devices were reprogrammed to previous device setting immediately after the CMR examination and after that evaluated at one year as clinical routine. The CMR protocol was basically um, the standard stress perfusion protocol recommended by SCMR guidelines. I just only point out that Cine images may be acquired on uh, steady state, balanced steady state uh, free precession images of fast guiding echo pulse sequence. We decided to use uh, gradient echo sequences based on scout images that were performed uh, just at the very beginning of the examination. If uh, there were uh, actually um, important metallic artifacts or if we measure the distance between the very center of the, the, the generator and the heart that was less than seven centimeters. Then stress perfusion imaging was always performed using a, a standard fast gradient echo based pulse sequences. So, uh, after that, uh, LGE and all the other uh, part of the examination were conducted as standard technique. The uh, analysis of the images uh, was based uh, always as, uh, as uh, CMR um, guidelines uh, regarding the assessing of ischemia defects uh, and function of uh, a cardiac function. Uh, for the quality of the examination, we used uh, to consider a score that was published uh, more or less 10 years ago by Klink et al., which take into account different parameters that may uh, influence the quality of the examination itself, uh, like cardiac, the presence of respiratory or cardiac ghosts, image blurring, uh, metallic artifacts, and all this uh, um, score was uh, considered in every um, slice that was acquired. So in cine images, late announcement, stress perfusion. According to that, uh, we divided uh, examination in non-diagnostic, poor, moderate, or of good quality. And poor, moderate, and good quality lead uh, anyway in an overall uh, uh, diagnostic CMR examination. So in all this period that is between August 2013 and March 2021, we perform more than 3,000 uh, stress perfusion uh, MRI, and I pointed out that only 66 patients were implanted with um, cardiac uh, uh, devices, such as a pacemaker or um, uh, ICD. Among them, 36 were implanted with a pacemaker, some 30 with an ICD. Here, if you want to go a little bit in details, you have all the baseline characteristic of patients, which are more or less the standard uh, patient who arrives for suspected or uh, known uh, um, ischemic heart disease and the reason for implantation of the MR conditional devices. 
um, I just point out that among the 66 patients, 50 required to be paced during CMR examination, while in 16 patients who were implanted with an ICD, the device was just turned off. As you can see here from this table, where you have all the uh, device setting before CMR, after and at one year follow-up, no significant alteration were found so that the device integrity was not compromised by the CMR examination immediately after CMR and at one year follow-up. Then we assessed the image quality to note, uh, two patients underwent uh, to two different uh, MR examination during all uh, these years, and so they were counted twice. So we, we have finally 68 CMR examination performed in total. Regarding patients equipped with the pacemakers, 97% of CMR examination were of good quality, leading to a diagnostic examination in all cases except for one, which I would like to point out was due to a Valsalva maneuver rather than the presence of metallic artifacts. And then we repeated just the, um, the examination two weeks after after uh, without any problem. And uh, also that only two patients had moderate LG quality due to respiratory motion, again, not due to metallic artifacts. Regarding patients equipped with an ICD, in uh, our cohort of patients, two were equipped with a subcutaneous ICD. In this case, the CINE images was such of non-diagnostic quality that we decided to not perform the adenosine stress test, while in the remaining 28 uh, patients with an MR conditional uh, ICD, stress perfusion was of good quality, except in one case, with a patient who presented just mild artifacts in the anterior wall, but this didn't preclude the diagnostic interpretation. Finally, LGE was of good quality in half of the patients and moderate quality in 10 and poor in four patients. But any, anyway, it was of diagnostic quality in every case. Regarding findings of stress perfusion CMR, uh, first of all, I would like to point out that no complication during vasodilation occurred and images were diagnosed of diagnostic quality in every patient except for the one with uh, the, um, except for the uh, quality that was a little bit less good in the patient with the artifacts uh, in the anterior wall. So just one. The hemodynamic response was evaluated by a uh, by um, uh, blood pressure, since uh, most of the patients were paced during adenosine stress. And we found that the diastolic uh, blood pressure dropped significantly. So maybe that could be used as an indicator. But mainly we used to assess a good adenosine response with the splenic switch off that was observed in 80% uh, of paced patients. Then uh, just uh, 23 of patients reported mild to moderate respiratory symptoms related to adenosine administration. As a result, uh, we found uh, um, stress defects in 31% uh, uh, of patients, in which uh, uh, 12 patients had these defects in the presence of uh, scar tissue found in LG, while a significant uh, inducible ischemia was found in six cases, so 9% of patients, and no significant ischemia, so in just one segment, uh, was found in only two patients. Patients. So according to literature, these two patients were treated medically, and in all the follow-up, they didn't have any particular uh, problem and remain asymptomatic, while the six patients with a positive stress test perfusion underwent to invasive coronary angiography that showed concomitant critical coronary stenosis that was uh, in accord, um, according to the, um, uh, the defects. 
Regarding the uh, follow-up of those patients, um, we had a mean follow-up of more or less four years. In all this period, MACE occurred in three patients. Two patients experienced end STEMI after two years and six years after the negative stress test. One patient died of dilated cardiomyopathy and three patients died for no, non-cardiac reason. I'll just point out that sometimes our colleague didn't trust so much stress perfusion MRI in patients with pacemakers. So for, in four cases, since the suspicion was so high, they decided to perform a coronary angiography anyway that excluded anyway coronary stenosis. So I, uh, with, regarding the discussion, I hope that with our study, we show a little bit more that uh, CMR in patients equipped with MR conditional pacemakers and ICD is safe, yields good image quality, and does not induce device malfunctioning immediately and one year after CMR examination. Actually, um, our uh, data are concordant with all uh, uh, study previews uh, published uh, regarding the pacing and um, the magnetic field. So we didn't find any particular pacing related side effects. Our protocol, as I previously um, uh, said uh, was to pace all patients with more than 1% of pacing documented in the evaluation just before entering the MRI. This is a, quite an easily applicable approach and with that nobody had a particular adverse arrhythmic event. Regarding CMR image quality, uh, again we didn't have any problem with pacemakers. With ICD, uh, generally they are thought to be a little more difficult since the degenerator are larger and the position is a little bit closer to the heart and plus they may have higher number of implanted leads. In our court of patients actually, in every case, it was a diagnostic exam, except for patients with subcutaneous ICDs. But I have to admit that we didn't use wideband in this case, so maybe this could be an option. And uh, again, regarding uh, uh, the, um, prog uh, the prognostic value of a negative stress test, I know that we do not have a huge cohort of patients that we can present, but uh, since uh, in 60 patients, uh, the, um, ne having a negative stress test uh, means quite a few. Uh, and maybe not related to the negative stress test they had uh, a lot of years before, uh, adverse cardiac events. Finally, regarding the fear of uh, not being able to assess the vasodilator response, we mainly relate to BP drop during uh, uh, adenosine stress, and uh, we found that the presence of the splenic switch off may also be help helpful in assessing a correct uh, uh, response to, um, uh, to adenosine. So really in conclusion, for our experience, uh, pacemakers and IC with pacemakers and ICDs, adenosine stress CMR is safe in both paced, non-paced patients, patient equipped with a pacemakers or an ICD. It provided good image quality and reliable ischemia detection. And I hope that uh, uh, the fear of device malfunctioning would not be an issue anymore for uh, uh, cardiologists and radiologists in this field. So thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, uh, for the nice presentation of the, of the paper. I think, uh, at least to me, a very important takeaway is uh, one, uh, of course, the safety, but we sort of know that already. But the other point that you that you nicely, um, nicely uh, worked out is that we do not have to be concerned about the heart rate being the key factor here. So you said that with the, the blood pressure, and it's interesting to me, I didn't know that honestly, that the diastolic blood pressure may be a marker here. So I hope that's, that you or someone else uh, goes after that in, in, in larger samples. I think that's, that's good. And that the image quality was also not significantly impaired overall. 
Um, so um, before I may have some questions, I saw that Venk had his uh, hand up. So Venk, uh, unmute yourself and go ahead with questions. Really nice study, thanks for sharing. One of the questions I had was related to, do you see any perfusion uh, abnormalities in the septum in these patients with, due to the dyssynchrony? There's been some even invasive data that suggests that this uh, septal perfusion, hypoperfusion is a feature of uh, the dyssynchrony. And in most of these patients, I believe they were being paced, I think, if I understood correctly. Yeah. So I'm curious, obviously you have the LGE to help sort that out, but. Um, Okay. Um, well, actually, thank you for your question. It's a very important point. But actually, actually, in my experience, I didn't find this. So um, I just point out you this example that is what, quite an interesting one. Is a patient who is paced. Actually, he has a perfusion deficit in also the septum here but it's for an LAD occlusion, more or less subocclusion. While uh, defects, as you told, uh, in the septum, no, actually no. The only one was really this one, but it was related of, for um, a coronary artery stenosis. Yeah, okay, I think that's a, that's a great point, Venk. Um, uh, also in patients with left bundle branch block, I think it would be really interesting to get a better understanding what the pathophysiological implications are with respect to perfusion and eventually oxygenation. Yeah, so a great question. So um, one uh, a very small question I had. So you are using routinely a protocol of two RR intervals and go for four slices. I was always yeah. concerned that going for two RR intervals doesn't leave enough data points to really uh, um, assess accurately the, the inflow kinetics. But you feel comfortable with that? Yes, we usually use four slices. If I, I get uh, the, um, uh, the question, one, base, one basal, two mid-ventricular, and one apical short axis, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, and then the other uh, point I wanted to make is um, you have, you only did a conditional, MR conditional. Yes. Uh, slices, right? Yes. Because, and I will sh briefly share my screen, because there is actually... Now, um, I don't know whether you have experience with uh, other devices with non-conditional, so basically regular uh, pacemakers and, and defibrillators. And there has been now a, a few weeks ago, this publication, the European Heart Journal, um, where a group of uh, several um, clinically very experienced CMR researchers, um, a senior author is Charlotte Manisty, um, yeah. and, but among them Dudley Penn and others, and others basically ask for removing the, the, this label and say, come on, guys, we've done enough pacemakers to know that it's safe enough. So uh, why don't we just uh, go ahead and, and scan everybody? And I have to say that since years, uh, if there is a, an important indication, I actually am not shying away of putting someone with a regular pacemaker in there. Uh, I will certainly not go for very aggressive sequences, but, mm -hmm. um, and so far just at 1.5 Tesla, but in fact, I don't even know whether there are good reasons for that uh, at all. So what is your, what is your opinion on that? Well, I completely agree with that. Uh, actually, my experience is, as I, I stressed a little bit, uh, we collected more or less uh, 66 patients in a decade. So that, that's because uh, people do not send patients yeah. with pacemakers or ICD to cardiac mm -hmm. MRI. I was just a, a little bit of story of this paper. I initially wanted to go multicentric because uh, I just had only 60 patients, but yeah. I called some friends all over Italy and France and uh, some other centers in Switzerland, but they didn't have any other patients to build a quite a good court. So as you can imagine, if it's so difficult to have patients with MR compatible devices, having patients with MR non compatible label like this, it was like impossible. Yeah. I and wonder what maybe I, I, I would be a little bit just afraid of metallic artifacts, maybe on three Tesla. I don't know, but I really don't know. Yeah. So what do what do others uh, think? Uh, I see that Patricia is on and and Otila from from uh, Budapest. 
Um, any any comments on on the use of uh, pacemakers who are not necessarily considered MR conditional or MR safe? If I can join. Yeah, go ahead, Attila from Budapest. Hi there. Uh, it's a fascinating paper. Congrats. Uh, I, I see you among the authors as well, who has a long history of perfusion study uh, experience. Uh, so we, we are doing a lot of uh, patients with pacemakers and ICDs, but primarily not perfusion studies. And I would agree that most of the non-conditional devices are okay, but uh, I I may also say that there might be some problems sometimes, uh, which we, we also have some paper, for example, uh, which was published not by me, but other authors in, in the New England Journal of Medicine, where they covered over a thousand cases. And sometimes you can experience power on reset uh, in some devices. And uh, once I also had an experience when a ICD, uh, which, ICD was completely damaged during the scan. Uh, maybe one reason for that was that the, yeah. the battery was already uh, lower than usual. So, yeah. so uh, yeah. there, there must be a special, yeah. you, you have to be especially uh, careful with these patients. But for example, the one which had the power on reset, uh, was uh, a patient who had also a complete atrioventricular block. And yeah. the way we noticed it, that suddenly she had a very, very low heart rate. And mm -hmm. we f first we thought that th this is an artifact of the vector EKG. But uh, as we removed the patient, the, yeah. the written returned to normal because the device started functioning again. And uh, it required an overnight stay, uh, stay for the patient during which the engineer of the manufacturer came and uh, personally resetted the device and restored some values to make it uh, functional again. So there might be some implications in some yeah. selected patients. Thank you very much for the feedback, Attila. From so I saw that so Corey in the in the in the chat um, uh, says I don't know Corey when you when you can unmute yourself and and uh, briefly talk about that yourself. Uh, if not, I'm happy to read it. Hi. Yes. Uh, first of all, thanks for the great presentation. Really enjoyed your data. Thank and you. um, we've had a few um, scans on three Tesla systems with three Tesla conditional devices and. Uh, really, you can barely even tell that the device is there. The artifact is very minimal. We tried a couple of legacy ICDs, but similar to your experience with the subcutaneous ICDs, before we even gave the stress agent, the image quality was so poor that we aborted the stress uh, scan. Mm -hmm. So we haven't tried any legacy pacemakers alone without a defibrillator coil. Well, that's great to hear, Corey. And you will present data at the ACC. That's wonderful. Um, to get some experience at 3T. Great, great work. Um, and then there's uh, Giovanni. Um, I don't know whether you want uh, and can unmute yourself. Um, so um, if not, uh, so it's in the chat um, that uh, Giovanni says that uh, he allows non-conditional devices um, that uh, if, if the CMR uh, appears to provide value uh, but they also do not have a lot of uh, referrals and um, there may be other confounding factors. And then, of course, referring physicians are often not aware that this is possible, but this will hopefully change because I, I think there's a good chance that eventually the conditional labeling may be removed. I feel sorry for Medtronic who put in millions and millions of dollars to, to develop MR conditional devices. Now we learn that maybe it was possible all along, but of course there are older uh, devices that, that, of course, as with the valves where up to 1988, we still have some single ball or cage ball devices that were not MR compatible, but generally since then, uh, they're all. There's also now um, uh, um, uh, Patricia, uh, I don't know whether you want to unmute yourself, but uh, she's writing, we have doubled in scanning non-conditional devices as well with safe results. Uh, we've been conservative and not included pacemaker-dependent patients. I think that's an in, important uh, point. 
Um, so if people are really dependent on significantly, then it's it's probably a different, slightly different story. And, uh, yes. Yeah. No, the, the only thing I would mention is that um, I think I, we generally on the non-device people have been scanning using SSFP perfusion. And so visually, I'll say um, I, I still do have that preference for the SSFP based um, um, a better SNR appearance for the perfusion. Um, you know, if we scan uh, device patients, we tend to stick to the DRE uh, sequences. Um, mm -hmm. And overall, decent results, I would say. I think um, the ICDs are probably the ones, depending on where the generators are located, where we've had issues. Yeah, yeah. So the, you cut out a little bit in the end, but you said that ICDs may have sometimes more issues. Okay. Thank you very much, Anna, and thank, thank you very much to all the discussants. Um, and uh, before we close, I just wanted to uh, point out uh, that uh, in about a month from now, on April 6th, we have the next CMR Journal Club, and I will host uh, the discussion about two papers that both use a technique that I, I like to call SMART CMR. SMART stands for Simultaneous Multiparametric Acquisition and Reconstruction Techniques. So these are the multitasking, fingerprinting, free running framework techniques. And we have two papers that will be discussed there and both have already agreed. One is from the group of uh, René Botner and Claudia Prieto from the KCL in London uh, on simultaneous T1, T2 and T1 row, CMR fingerprinting uh, for a contrast free, a contrast agent free myocardial tissue uh, characterization. And another one is looking at amyloid doses uh, as assessed by MR fingerprinting. So these will be interesting. So I hope I can welcome you there um, on April 6th at the usual time. So for now, I hope that uh, everybody will stay safe, not just because of COVID, but also in Europe. And we're all with you and, um, and uh, be well and see you next week or next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much.